that comes so bitter and cold, Father. But Lord God, as we cry out to you this morning, we know that there's nothing, nothing impossible for you, Father. So this morning, as we cry out to you, Almighty God, we hope and pray that you, Almighty God, we blow a fresh year, a fresh year, Almighty God, and the Holy Spirit move to Jamaica like we know with a mighty and a powerful redeeming power, Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? The Bible says, let us exalt him. Let us exalt his name in his sanctuary. We praise him this morning. Hallelujah. The song says, we shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. I shall not die.
pray for the transformation of the church, the transformation of the community. Let us pray for the transformation of this nation. Let us pray for the world globally. Pray against the oppression, the wars, the fightings. In the name of Jesus. Ah, let us pray that God will give release and every demonic entity and every spiritual force of darkness will be rendered null and void. That every plan and every operation of the enemy will cease in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, church. Just two or three gathered together, touching anything, anything concerning the name of the Lord. The Lord is in the midst to release us and to bless us. Hallelujah. So we know that the Lord is present today. Hallelujah. 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 We
Today we are talking about when plagued by an evil spirit. When plagued by an evil spirit. And I don't want you to view this today as a person who is demon possessed. But I want you to understand that sometimes you see some things happening to you, happening to your family, happening around you that cause you to be miserable, to have personality swings, mood swings, and all of these things that cause you and the persons around you to be miserable. And then it could be that you are being plagued by a spirit, though not possess you, but the spirit plaguing you, plaguing your family. Amen. 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 Creating disruption for your life. And that's the vein in which we want to go today. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Impeding forces 
and I let your spirit rule in Jesus' name. In the church, in the name of Jesus. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Remember now, one shall chase a thousand, and two shall put ten thousand to their flight. Amen. When plagued by an evil spirit, the text from which we read commences like this. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Amen. Now, when I reflected upon the text expositorily, the text has revealed that the Hebrew word for evil here, as used in the text, is the word wrong, R-A. And does not always speak or Speaking of a wicked, possessing spirit, but in basic definition, can mean a bad spirit, ill-favored spirit, a spirit that causes calamity or trouble. Now sometimes you're never in a situation and you recognize that the mood of wherever you are, the atmosphere is being disrupted. And you wonder what could have occurred to cause that mood swing to disrupt the atmosphere. It is because of an evil spirit. Amen that is trying to change the mood of what is happening in that space. It is no doubt that this terrorizing spirit made Saul and everyone around him miserable. Amen? So what happened is that the spirit made Saul miserable. And it was not only making Saul miserable, but it was also making everybody around him miserable. Amen? The actual text says, and an evil spirit from the Lord shoveled Saul. And I will explain that in a while because some people are going to ask, how could God put an evil spirit upon Saul? after the, his spirit departed from him. So I will elaborate on that. Now, the, uh, the, in the NIV, the Bible says an evil spirit here is interpreted as a distressing spirit. Have you never been distressed? Have you never been distressed? Circumstances of life cause you to be distressed. It and troublesome situations cause you to be, to be distressed. So this was a distressing spirit. This distressing spirit resulted in mood swings. You ever see some people change like real lizard? Yeah. Mood swings. For Saul, this happened multiple times. Amen? Revealing his apathy. In other words, you have no enthusiasm for life. Depression emerges. Raging temper. Some people were so nice all of along, all along, and all of a sudden they become so raging in their temper. And you wonder if it's the same person I'm talking to. Come on. Amen. Do we have anybody like that in church today? Raging temper. Switching personality. That the person, all of a sudden the personality changes. Amen. You see, they said that that really is that takes the shape of wherever it is. That if it's on a tree or if it feels threatened or anyway, it turned from green to black, from, from gray to black, and all that kind of thing. So this spirit caused Saul to 
personality to change it emerge cause depression to surface raging temper amen amen you wonder if it's an animal all of a sudden an animal just emerges and uh, cause paranoia you know what paranoia is is that you feel everybody's out to get you everybody are who they are everybody have spell on you everybody hates you and Saul felt that way everybody ought to get him when the spirit company him amen and after his ex exposure it is said to combat I goes to war and combat and pick up some spirit and in combat and his mood changed the nice man changed the nice woman change, the nice friend change, the conversation switch. The man is just in a rage. He's in a killing mood. He's in a wicked mood. He's not. He's not the calm person that you know. He like the, the like the spirit of God is no longer there in him. And some people, church people, are like that too. Man. Say amen. amen. You don't want to say amen. amen. Well, somebody says say ouch then. Right? Shall we praise the Lord? Amen. So, the man that was nice all of a sudden, when the Spirit of God departs from you, let me tell you something. You can become like when, 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 when the Spirit of God come, departs from you. The Bible says, when the house is swept clean, other spirits are seeking opportunities to enter that space. Amen. And this is some Christians, they have all kinds of spirit. Why am I saying amen to them? Amen. Some are good from spirit. That is easy to puff up, not inflated. Eh? Love is not easily inflated or puff up. The Bible says that you know, some have a cat spirit. The wrong with them, them scratch you. Amen. Some have a donkey spirit. If you're wrong with them, them kick you. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? It's not very common I'm talking about. I'm just talking uh, hypothetically. I'm not speaking. That are things that I know. Amen? Amen. Some have a barking spirit. And that seem like one of the lower creatures. That if you trouble them, they bark at your bark. You know? Some have all kinds of spirit. A lion spirit. If you trouble them, they roar at your bark. You understand what I mean? Yeah, hey, shall we praise the Lord? So this was the mood that Saul was going into. Switching in and switching out. Amen. Many people would say, why would God put an evil spirit on anyone? But God does it to punish us for our acts of disobedience. Amen. And sometimes these things happen to us because we're disobedient. We're disobedient to the command of God. We're disobedient to the word of God. So God takes his spirit from you. And sometimes the Lord takes his spirit from you. All you can feel, you're praying, but you're not getting the breakthrough. You're, you're, you're trying to feel the presence of God, but the presence of God is not there. You know why? It's because you have been disobedient. You are trying to please yourself and act in your own way. And as a consequence, God withdraws his spirit. And when God withdraws his spirit, automatically the devil sees an opportunity for his evil spirit to work. So Saul was charged with disobeying God's command by Samuel. And I want to take you to chapter 15 and verse 17 to verse 22. Amen. I may not read the entire um, um, passage, but you can read as we go through. And Saul said, when you were little in your own sight, was you not made the head of the tribe of Israel? And the Lord anointed your king over Israel. Right? So what Samuel was saying, when you were nothing, Saul, the Lord lifted you up, and the Lord made your king over Israel, and gave you prominence, positioned you, uh, and then he goes on to say, Samuel goes on to say, verse 18, And the Lord sent you on a journey, and said, Go, and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them, until they become consumed. Right? And the Bible says in verse 19, Wherefore didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but, but did fly upon the spoils, and did evil in the sight of the Lord. 
So what the Lord, what Saul was, what Samuel was charging Saul with, said the Lord gave you a command. And the Lord said to you, go out and fight against the sinners. Go out and fight against the Amalekites. The Amalekites. But what? As after you go out there to fight the Amalekites, and then let somebody down the money before you. Lord of mercy. So what he was actually saying, you know, is that when Saul went to fight the Amalekites, and then saw the fat bull there, and then saw the road to get for them, and then saw the possibility to get rich out of the situation, and took up the animals and said, listen, I am going to give a portion of it to God as a sacrifice. When God said, wipe them out. Lord of mercy, shall we praise the Lord? And some of you sitting down there and say, I saw that, but I saw some of you Still, you allow money to choke out the anointing. You allow materialism and party and secularism to choke out the spirit of God out of you. So when God sent you on a mission, you abandon the mission and start thinking about yourself. This is an opportunity to get rich. Jesus met the man at the door, and when Jesus walked up to him, 
and he said, Oh, Jesus of Nazareth, son of David, you come to torment me before the time. And don't send us back to the abyss. Send us into the herd of swine. And Jesus commanded to go into the herd of swine. They had to obey. Shall we praise the Lord? Touch your neighbor and say they had to obey. So it is not the devil. The devil sometimes will allow these things to happen. But it is God who has the ultimate control of evil spirit. Amen. And so this is why God could cause and allow them to, to punish his disobedient children for acts of disobedience. This evil spirit upon Saul was a result of Saul's own doing. And the entire episode was an outgrowth of Saul's sinful nature. So why, amen, we are saying that the spirit, amen, come upon Saul, the evil spirit came upon Saul. It was a result of Saul's own doing. Because if you are sticking to the commandments and the word of God and living according to God's will, no evil spirit can come over your soul. Lord of mercy, shall I praise the Lord? So, no evil spirit could have afflicted Saul. It was a direct result of Saul's own disobedient action that resulted in the spirit coming upon him. And so it was miserable. Because when you're not in God's will, you're miserable. Come on, church. When you're not walking according to God's word, you're miserable. Sometimes you think you could do no good to sin and come wipe off your mouth like a fowl. And then everything would be all right, but you realize you're miserable. You can't live in a heat. Because only in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. You realize that the whole, the whole, uh, the whole balance of your life is disrupted. Because you're not doing according to what God wants. Come on, church. Come on, church. So it is not the only time that God punishes his children for acts of disobedience. In 1 Kings 11 and verse 1 to 13, God also punished Solomon for his disobedience. Now in verse 9, the Bible says, And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared unto him twice. God appeared, Solomon prayed, and to be brought down the presence of God in the newly constructed temple. And God appeared unto him twice and showed him in his glory. But Solomon turned from the Lord. His heart turned from the Lord. In verse 10 of 1 Kings 11 it says, And had, comm and, and had commanded him, and, and that which God had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but kept not that which the Lord commanded him. So the Lord said to him, don't go after other gods. Amen. The Bible says in verse 11, where the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, and you have not kept my covenant and my status, which I have commanded you, I will surely, amen, rend the kingdom from you and will give it to your servant. Amen. So the, the, the problem is that God was not going to take the kingdom from Solomon and give it to his servant. Can you imagine the king's kingdom taken from him and give it to his servant? Why? Because it is disobedience. And if you read disobedience, and if you read from chapter chapter 11 of 1 Kings and verse 1 down, you will see why. Because the Bible says, and Solomon loved many strange women. And God says, don't marry to the Egyptians. Don't marry to the strange, uh, to those women from those strange idolatrous tribes, the Midianites and so on. And Solomon loved many strange women. He loved women so much that I'm not saying man must not love women and a brother gives it. Don't get me wrong. Shall we pray to God? Because you know, I would not like to really love somebody else of your own kind. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? It's about Solomon loved many strange women to the extent that he had 700 wives. That's enough woman. Shall we praise the Lord? 300 concubines read the earlier verses. That's 1,000 women. Then he had princesses and maidens. Why am I doing so much woman? 
It is 365 days in a year. Huh? How are you? Leave with some of the wives. Maybe each night you go knock on the door and say, okay, move on, you 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 okay, move on, okay, move on. You okay, move on. You okay, move on. You okay, move on. You understand what I'm saying? But it was not even the quantity of women that Solomon had. The Bible says that these women from strange nations and strange tribes turned his heart away from God and allowed him to worship their idols. To the extent that Solomon built temple. That's why the Bible says there must not be an equal yoke. You must not be unequal to you because if people's principles and value system different from your value system, they are going to want to lead you into a pathway that you should not go and they will turn your heart away from God. You know, we say amen, you know. Can we come say when we are saying it? Shall we praise the Lord? They will turn, and that's precisely what happened to Solomon. He turned his heart away from God and he started to worship the Adonai. So when Solomon should be in church on Sunday, in the, on the mountains, I worship to me and all of these other idols, when he should be obeying and worshiping God. The blood of Jesus! So the Lord said, I will punish you, Solomon. Amen. And some of us, you know, some of us like, we are so gullible. Amen. They will put a little string around my neck, and we see some bling, bling, and ray, ray. We see must. Let me tell you something. If it is not God giving you the blessing, don't take it. Amen. Amen. It will turn your heart away from God. You will lose the command which God has given you. You will abort your mission for material and financial gains and serve other gods apart from the true and the living God. In the name of Jesus Christ, if you find your way going after this God, turn around and say, I have wandered far away from God. Now I am coming on the path of sin. Too long I have tried. Now I have coming on. When plagued by a negative energy and an evil spirit, what should you do? Amen. What should you do? One, you have to align yourself with an anointed one or with the divine anointing. Shall I praise the Lord? For when you find yourself in that position, only the Spirit of God through an anointed person can break it off you. Amen? When you find yourself a good mother, a father, and a, and a spirit of blood, and a, and a huge powder and an oil that is a demonic entity, and you are so captivated that the devil holds you, only Jesus Christ through the anointing can set you free. So, the Bible tells us in verse 17 and verse 18, and Saul said unto him, his servant, Amen, provide me now with a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants of Saul, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite that is cunning in play, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matter, a, a comely person, and the Lord is with him. That is the key. Because he could be a woman of war, he could be prudent in many matter, but did not have God. And it was talking about David. And then the, the man said, one of the things that I notice about this man is that the Lord God is with him. Oh yes. For the Lord is not with him. Don't bring him come. Hey, if the Lord is with, not with him, he cannot speak to no devil. He cannot preach to no Satan and release them. And Psalms are bringing to me. Shall I praise the Lord? And verse 23 says, And it came to pass, Amen, it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God 
came upon Saul that David took a harp and played it with his hand. Oh, amen. So Saul was refreshed. And as well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Shall we praise the Lord? Let me say to you that it is not by might nor by power but it's my by my spirit say the Lord for it is by the anointing that Jesus brings to you. It is by the Holy Ghost and power just like the prophet spoke and this these are the days of the latter rain and God is moving by his power again for by the anointing Jesus brings to you so you may ask pastor what where the Bible says that David was anointed just look at chapter 16 and verse 13 the Bible tells us that God sent Samuel to anoint a new king. Shall we praise the Lord? And Samuel went to the house of Jesse and he saw all these robust sons. And he said to and he said, Is this the one God got said no? Don't look strong and muscular. He does not have what I have. And he went to all the sons of, of Jesse, about seven of them. And then Samuel asked, Are these all the sons that you have? And then Jesse said, Yes, only with the exception of one. One little one, the younger one. Amen. He's in the field, keeping the flock. And uh, hey, he's the younger one. So hey, God wouldn't want that one. And God said, Send for him. Shall we praise the Lord? And when David walked off, because David was little and chubby, David was not so significant among his brethren. Yes, but when he walked up, God said, that is the one. You know why that was the one? Because it is the anointing that makes the difference. Shall we praise the Lord? It is not your eloquent speaking. It is not your, 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 your prowess or your financial ability. It is not your intellectual ability. It is not your, your physical physique. It is the anointing that breaks to you. Shall we praise the Lord? And praise the Lord in the house. So the Bible says in verse 13, and Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his virgin. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. That's what I'm trying. Once he was anointed, I am anointed. Isaiah 10 
and verse 27 says, it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will, that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. No care what is over you. The yokes shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. Amen. The second point I want to make, brothers and sisters, is that if you are plagued by evil forces of darkness, when you are plagued with evil spirit, we should worship. Amen. And use it as a vehicle to usher us into God's presence where there is freedom and fullness of joy. For Psalm 16 and verse 11 says, In his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hands there are pleasures forevermore. Oh, what fellowship divine. I am his and he is mine. It seems that what David did was to use the heart as an instrument of worship under the anointing of the Spirit of God to lift Saul's soul into the very presence of God where the forces of darkness could not survive and prosper. Amen. Amen. Psalm 71 and verse 22 says, I will also praise you with psaltery and even thy truth, O oh my God, unto you will I sing with the harp, O oh, the Holy One of Israel. So obviously, the harp was an instrument of worship. And when David sat before him, maybe David just sit there and start playing. Hey! And when he start playing under the anointing, the man start worshiping the Almighty God. Oh yes, maybe he start quoting one of his songs, saying, I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make me boast in the Lord the enemy shall praise the Lord they shall hear of the goodness of the Lord yeah maybe so when he played then play and said I will praise the Lord and everything that has been praise the Lord praise the Lord with dance and temper and after it's that play demonic entity say I can't hang around here evil spirits I can't hang around here I can't stay here anymore although it is not so but I have to depart I have to take I have to say so long bye bye come on church so worship worship true worship will break the spell of evil spirit shall we praise the Lord the next point I want to make, and this is my final point, is that when plagued by an evil spirit, not only should you align yourself with somebody that is divinely anointed and appointed and with the anointing, but and not only should you engage in true worship, but you should pray. Amen? Amen. For we pray, and God delivers. We pray, and God stops the war. We pray. And God give us one more chance. Shall we praise the Lord? Hey, the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And they and, and Paul told the believers to put on the whole armor of God so that they can fight against the wiles of the devil. But one of the things that Paul told them. After they talk about the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the shoes, and all of these things, the helmet of salvation. He came down the bottom and he says in verse 6, verse 18 of Ephesians 6, he says, pray always. Come on, church. Pray always. Without prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let me tell you something. If you are a praying child of God, even if evil spirit come, then come around. Stand on the feet with you. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? 
we pray.